farmers along the Barbies River to benefit from the government's flood relief cash grant. Linden woman was robbed while away at work in the capital city. Ghana police force investigating a murder-suicide in Parfait Harmony. In the region, Ida aftermath, more than a million in Louisiana without power. And internationally, Delta variant surges across Southeast Asia. Greetings and welcome to another edition of Channel 2 Headline News Update. I am Bibi Bacchus. Thank you for joining us. The community of Parfait Harmony was earlier today rocked by a murder-suicide. Inquiries revealed that 45-year-old Rollins Rodriguez brutally murdered his 37-year-old wife Camille Robertson Rodriguez during an argument by stabbing her before committing suicide by hanging himself. The mother of two was discovered lying face down in a bedroom, while the man was discovered hanging from a roof above her. According to relatives, the couple had been married for eight years and argued from time to time. However, they are unsure as to what led to the man murdering the woman before committing suicide. Police investigations are ongoing. A woman is now counting her losses after her home in Linden was burgled while she was away at work in the capital city. Esther Sobers has more on that story. A 25-year-old woman has been left in shock after she was reportedly robbed of three barrels containing household appliances from the United States of America. The incident occurred sometime between August 29th and August 31st, 2021 at Amelia's Ward, Linden. The police inquiries disclosed that the victim works in Georgetown but visits Linden every weekend to check on her home and ensure everything is intact. However, on August 29th, she took the three barrels she had days before received to her home at Linden and secured them before heading back to Georgetown. On Tuesday, she received a call from her mother informing her that the house was broken into and she should come to see what occurred. Her parents usually visit her yard every other day to do gardening and to check on the house. Upon arrival, she discovered the barrels and other items removed from her house. The thieves gained entry through a kitchen window and exited through the back door, which is not within the public view. Police investigations are ongoing. For Channel 2 Headline News, Esther Sobers. Thanks, Esther. On Tuesday, scores of farmers along the Burpees River, Region 10, benefited from the government's flood relief cash grant. The cash grant is the government's way of supporting farmers who suffered losses in the recent countrywide flood. Over $7 billion was set aside for this initiative. Minister of Natural Resources, Vic Van Barat, spearheaded the disbursement exercise at the Kama. Uh, we know that the grant that will be given to you or has been given to you previously through the COVID cash grant and other ways of creating incentives or giving out incentives is not to put you back to 100% where you were before, but it is to assist you to get there. Here is the cash grant that you'll be given today, please, to go back or to, to restore your farms or your, your, your livestock or your cattle or whichever the case is, that you go back to some kind of normalcy so that once again you can start providing for yourself and your family again. Minister Barat told the farmers that the government remains committed to ensuring their livelihoods are sustained. Ms. Marlene Rogers of Wiki Kalkuni lost both cash crops and livestock to the flood. Rogers said it was devastating. However, she is optimistic that the monies she received will assist her with starting afresh. Thanks to the President, Mr. Infrance Ali, we, the people of Wiki Kalkuni, are very thankful for his gratitude towards us remind, remembering us in this village. We are so thankful for his help and still looking out to support, support from him and we will also support him. Minister Barat reminded the farmers that the government remains concerned about their well-being. Don't go away after the break. Car collides with Massey truck while exiting a police station. Thank you. 
good girl forget things. Oh, Who's the problem, Granny? I want money for bar for those surgery. I was dancing and I fall and fracture my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, lot 238 South Road, Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get through. Plus, I could dance again. <laughs> Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Welcome to Kasum's Furniture. Find everything you need for your home and more under one roof in our newly decorated showroom. Our locally crafted furniture has been perfected over the last 60 years. From our hands to your home, we also bring to you our newly introduced lines of imported furniture and sleep center where you can find a wide range of beds and mattresses. Kisun's Furniture, furnishing homes for over 60 years. For decades, milk has remained the same. Until now. Introducing the Great Dairy Full Cream Milk from Alabama Trading. Enriched with vitamins A to D and calcium to promote healthy teeth, strong bones, and vitality. Great Dairy Milk is delicious and fortified to encourage healthy cell growth within the body. No wonder it's the number one brand of milk produced in Ireland. Now available nationwide in 400 gram packages at leading supermarkets and wholesale vendors. Distributed by Alabama Trading. When you need money and you gotta get it fast, Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop is the place for that confidential transaction in a quiet and secure location. You'll get the highest value per penny weight for your gold and also enjoy the lowest interest rates and longest payback period too. Yes, for that instant transaction to solve a pressing financial problem. That Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, 46 Boyle Place, that's between the Ministry of Housing on Brick Dam and White Castle Fish Shop, be your first and only choice. Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, safe and sound, solid and secure, always there for you. Telephone 231-7878 and 223-8955. Survival Shopping Complex brings to you its delivery service, Shop Through WhatsApp. This process is simple. All you need to do is call or message your grocery list to 613-9683 and we will select your items for you and have them delivered directly to you, even out of town. This is convenient because we can stay on the phone with you as we select your favorite brands. We're happy to do your shopping for you. Contact us on WhatsApp today and shop price smart at Survival Shopping Complex. So that someday I can do something to make a difference. I'm the first in my family to attend the university and I won't be the last. I want my daughter to be able to hold her head up high in this world as a proud, educated woman. Education has changed my life by giving me the opportunity to make it better. Welcome back. Two men are currently in the hospital after their car crashed into a massive truck while they were exiting a police station. As the service has more. Police are investigating an accident on the Springlands Public Road, Caribbean Barbies, yesterday, leaving one person hospitalized. Investigations reveal that the motor lorry GKK2444, owned by Massey Distribution and driven by 22-year-old Roshan Jaffer Ali of Lot 3 to 4 Strands, New Amsterdam, Burbies, was proceeding north along the Springlands Public Road and motor car PYY3Y37, driven by 41-year-old Street Laljit of Lot 109, Section B, 72 Quarantine, Barbies, was proceeding east out of the Springlands Police Station compound. As the car approached the public road, it is alleged by the driver that his foot slipped off the brakes pedal and onto the accelerator, causing the car to collide with the motor lorry. As a result, the driver and an occupant 
Vishwin Edwin, 32-year-old of Lot 54, Line Pad, Caribbean Barbies, received injuries and were taken to the Skellum Public Hospital and seen by a doctor on duty. However, the driver was admitted in a stable condition for observation. The Guyana Police Force has since launched an investigation into the circumstances surrounding the accident. Notice of intended prosecution served on both drivers. The driver of the motor lorry is presently in custody at the Springlands Police Station. For Channel 2 Headline News, Esther Silvers. Thanks, Esther. On Tuesday, the Court of Appeal upheld the conviction of Bibi Sharima Gopal and her ex-lover Jarvis Small for the 2010 murder of 16-year-old Nisha Gopal but reduced the sentence to 45 years each. The teen's headless body was found in a suitcase at a resort along the Linden Suicide Highway. Her mother and her stepfather were found guilty of the crime at the Georgetown High Court in March of 2015 and sentenced to 106 years and 96 years imprisonment, respectively, by High Court Judge Justice Navrindra Singh. Unsatisfied with the court's verdict, the peer filed an appeal saying that the trial was unfair and that the judge erred in law. The appeal was heard via Zoom by Chancellor of the Judiciary Acting Justice Yana Cummins Edwards and Justices of Appeal Don Gregory and Rishi Prasad. In delivering the ruling, the Chancellor dismissed the arguments of the convict's attorneys who contended that the murder charge and hearing should have been handled separately. Citing that the initial sentence was excessive, the Chancellor said that the trial judge erred in the determination of the terms of sentence. The appeal court affirmed the duo's convictions but reduced their sentence to 45 years. However, the court did not deduct the time spent on remand from their sentence. Law enforcement officers on the West Bank of Namarara are investigating a driver for his involvement in an accident with a motorcyclist while he was avoiding a speed bump as the Sobers has more. Police are investigating an accident on the Nimes Public Road West Bank Demerara, which resulted in a car colliding with a motorcyclist. Police inquiries disclosed that the motor car, PHA3603, owned and driven by 33-year-old Kemel Jordan of Lot 50 Old Road Nimes West Bank Demerara, was proceeding south along the public road. As he was approaching a speed hump, he swerved and ended up in the opposite lane. The car collided with the motorcycle CE4755 driven by 54-year-old Sean Moore of 98 David Rose Street, Bagusville, West Bank, Demerara, causing him to fall, receiving injuries to his right leg. He was picked up by public spirited citizens and transported to the West Demerara Regional Hospital by police. He was seen and examined by a doctor on duty who treated him for a fractured right leg and admitted him as a patient. A breathalyzer test was conducted on the driver and found to be above the prescribed limits of 1.52 micrograms. The driver of the car was served with a notice of intended prosecution and is in custody. Investigations are ongoing. For Channel 2 Headline News, Esther Sowers. Thanks Esther. Don't go away after the break. Ida Aftermath, more than a million in Louisiana without power and anxiety grows as cash-strapped Afghans queued outside closed banks. But before that, here's the bridge retraction schedule. Someday, I can do something to make a difference. I'm the first in my family to attend the university, and I won't be the last. I want my daughter to be able to hold her head up high in this world as a proud, educated woman. Education has changed my life by giving me the opportunity to make it better. When you need money, and you've got to get it fast. Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop is the place for that confidential transaction in a quiet and secure location. You'll get the highest value per penny weight for your gold and also enjoy the lowest interest rates and longest payback period too. 
Yes, for that instant transaction to solve a pressing financial problem. That Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, 4 to 6 Boyle Place, that's between the Ministry of Housing on Brick Dam and White Castle Fish Shop, be your first and only choice. Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, safe and sound, solid and secure, always there for you. Telephone 231-7878 and 223-8955. Welcome to Kasum's Furniture. Find everything you need for your home and more under one roof in our newly decorated showroom. Our locally crafted furniture has been perfected over the last 60 years. From our hands to your home, we also bring to you our newly introduced lines of imported furniture and sleep center where you can find a wide range of beds and mattresses. Kisun's Furniture, furnishing homes for over 60 years. Survival Shopping Complex brings to you its delivery service, Shop Through WhatsApp. This process is simple. All you need to do is call or message your grocery list to 613-9683 and we will select your items for you and have them delivered directly to you, even out of town. This is convenient because we can stay on the phone with you as we select your favorite brands. We're happy to do your shopping for you. Contact us on WhatsApp today and shop price smart at Survival Shopping Complex. Girl forget things. Oh, Who's the problem, Granny? I want money for borrow for those surgery. I was dancing and I fall and fracture my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, Lot 238 South Road, Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get through. Plus, I could dance again. <laughs> Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Welcome back. Now we take a look at news in the region and around the world. Hurricane Ida has caused widespread power outages across the U.S. states of Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama. More than a million people on the Gulf Coast are without electricity, and many are still stranded by flooding. Al Jazeera's Phil Lavin has more. Somebody help us, please. They are completely desperate here. We need help. Please, bro. Ida tore out roofs and windows, ripped bricks out of walls, destroying lives and buildings in a few long hours. Now they are pleading. We need y'all, please. Look at my building. If I wouldn't have got my mama from through here, we'd have been stuck in here. I left out here, I had water way up here. We need y'all. Somebody help us, please. But where do you even begin? From the sky, it is just water everywhere. Roads, now rivers, they look like boats. But they're actually cars. Residents just have to hope the engine holds out. Almost all of the phones are down here. Ever since this thing started, we have no communication with anybody. Some are getting online to ask for help on social media. But here in Laplace, just north of New Orleans, they are pretty much trapped. Jay owns four hotels. His 30 staff have been stranded inside for days. He can't reach them to see if they're OK. That's the issue, isn't it? You come yeah. here to try to rescue them. Yeah. You can't get down there. I can't get there. So yeah, because I, mean, I, and I don't have a boat. I mean, we're a hotelier. Why would we own a boat? <laughs> so that's why I was just hoping that somebody would be here. That would, or, I was hoping maybe National Guard or somebody would be protecting this. The danger for those who are now trapped by this water is enormous. First of all, you've got the risk of alligators because they are moving into these, what are essentially now rivers. We know of at least one attack. Then there's disease because if you've been hit by debris, you have an open wound, this water is filthy. You do not want to go anywhere near it. And then of course, there is the bigger risk of the power lines. Loads of them have come down. They litter the side of the road where they snapped like twigs, some making the simple act of walking home incredibly dangerous. The power's been out here and in the wider New Orleans area since Hurricane Ida struck. Officials say the grid is, quote, 100% smashed. It may be off for weeks. 
Some have generators, which means they can help with the cleanup, but they need gas, which is scarce. Cars line up outside this gas station because there's word of a delivery. As you drive through this town, all you see is devastation. Shop fronts gone, entire homes destroyed. That's my living room. We were actually in that area during the time. Jason was watching TV when this tree uprooted and came through the ceiling. I had to take a, a decision between which danger I want to deal with. He and his wife had to run into the storm to escape. Even in those winds, you have to go outside and run down the street. Yes, sir. Definitely, because at this point now you have air, but the wind that's blowing at this point, it could lift the whole roof. And now we're putting ourselves in, which we put ourselves in danger, but I had to take a, a decision between which danger I want to deal with. From the sky, they search for those who need immediate rescue. And through all of it, that deep south resilience and humor shines through. By the way, I want to cut this tree anyway. <laughs> And I don't have to pay for it. So either helped you in a it, way. It helped me. And then I want to remodel my front, the exact area. So that's going to happen. So, I mean, it's nothing to do but smile about it. Ida took a lot from them, but she will not take their spirit. Phil Lavelle, Al Jazeera, La Place, Louisiana. As the Taliban forms its new government, one of the most pressing problems is the state of the economy. Afghanistan financial problems got worse as the Taliban advanced. Al Jazeera's Rob McGrill reports. Trying to get a grip on an economy that is faltering at best. Outside one of Kabul's main banks, the Taliban allow in just 10 customers at a time, as hundreds more wait their turn, not very patiently. Commander Ibrahim probably didn't expect to be controlling frustrated crowds when the Taliban stormed to victory. Yes, of course we understand their problems and that's why we've brought these mujahideen here to serve them. Many customers are government employees who say they haven't been paid for months. And caught by the speed of the former government's collapse, everyone is running out of cash. The government should have handed over everything in good order instead of running away like it did. I have a, a money in a bank like uh, $4,000, but, uh, but I can't cash my money from bank. People's access to banks and to cash remains a real problem. The banks have largely remained closed. When they are open, there are strict limits on how much you can withdraw. And it all points to a much bigger fiscal problem of how Afghanistan is going to pay its way under a Taliban government. The country's central bank reserves have been frozen by the US, while World Bank and IMF funding has stopped. Just surviving is the immediate concern for many businesses. So it takes like six months. The Hussein family completed the expensive opening of a second coffee shop branch two weeks before the Taliban takeover. As I contact with the people who have restaurants, who have some individual businesses, so they're all down now. Further down the street, Taylor Hamid Rahimi doesn't know when things will improve. Because the banks are closed and people's money is stuck in the banks, there is no business. If the banks are open, then people will come. On his rack hang an increasing number of uncollected jackets and suits. They were ordered before the Taliban victory by people who no longer have the cash to pay for them, or who've left the clothes and their country behind in search of something better. Rob McBride, Al Jazeera, Kabul. And finally, the Delta coronavirus variant continues to surge across Southeast Asia. But there are signs that lockdowns are working in Thailand and Indonesia. Al Jazeera's Florence Lur reports. Overworked and underpaid, healthcare workers in the Philippines are protesting in the capital Manila. The country is once again seeing soaring rates of new infections spurred by the highly transmissible Delta variant. It is sad that many of us have died, many of us have become sick, and many have resigned or opted to retire early, yet we are still kneeling before the Department of Health to give us our benefits. The government set aside special risk allowances for medical staff last year, but many say the compensation has not been paid. Malaysia too is seeing infection and death rates go up, despite a lockdown and a vaccination campaign, which has seen more than 45% of its population fully vaccinated.
There are concerns the real numbers could be even higher. We have public health experts that have been uh, cited recently uh, saying that for every one confirmed case of COVID-19, there's actually two cases of COVID-19 which go undetected. He says it's important that other preventive measures like double masking and physical distancing continue to be practiced. Other countries are reporting lower infection rates. Indonesia, which saw a peak in cases last month, has started easing restrictions. Around 12% of schools in its capital, Jakarta, reopened their doors for the first time since the pandemic started. Schools in the city were supposed to reopen in June, but the plan was postponed as another wave of infections hit the country. Thailand, too, is seeing a dip in cases after a record high just two weeks ago. But the government has come under heavy criticism for its handling of the pandemic. The Thai parliament has begun a no-confidence debate on Prime Minister Prayut Chanocha and five ministers, with a vote scheduled for Saturday. Florence Louis, Al Jazeera, Kuala Lumpur. And that is it for today's regional and international news. Here now is your 3D weather forecast. all for this edition of Channel 2 Headline News Updates. Tune in on Thursday at 7 p.m. for another episode. Be sure to subscribe, like and follow us on Facebook and YouTube. Until then, stay safe and take care.